Now the windshield wipers have gone back to intermittent. Uh, see that? Isn't that nice? Yeah, I'm sure a lot of people are like, well, if I'm out of money spent for a truck, where's the massaging seats? Where is the, uh, the the highway cruise? You know, where is this feature, that feature? Where's the winch kit? Yeah, I get it. It's a lot of money. Should have a lot of nice features on it. But this truck really does absorb the bumps well. So it's just really incredible how this is a heavy duty truck and it does not beat the crap out of you. That's, you know, that's it's a challenge you start making these big, beefy trucks. Big tires, big suspension. But the Multimatic definitely helps. It. But it's interesting, it really isn't any settings for like the Baja. You know, this isn't really designed to be the really so called off road Baja truck. It has the beefy, badass look. But it doesn't have mode. Only mode it has is normal or tow. So it really isn't much, I guess. I don't know. I looked at that earlier. Probably wrong about that, but I don't feel like playing that right now. Yeah, I misspoke. It has the off road or normal or tow. So it's either off road or normal. It doesn't have like. The, you know, the snow, the wet, the Baja, the crawl. It doesn't bother me. I'm not doing that anyways. Everybody's watching my channel. It's like, wouldn't matter if hell wants stuff anyways, Iceman. You're not going to use it. You're just driving down the highway. <laughs> right. <laughs> so, everybody buys all this stuff. It's the baddest ass stuff in the world. For the most part, nobody ever uses it. Yeah, you know these stories? Oh, the roads are all screwed up as usual. Now, this is a huge difference on me getting around the roads from this Waze. It's telling me to go south to eventually go north. But most people don't have Waze. They don't understand that if you went southbound and then got on 95 north and go through the inner harbor, you'll get faster up to the other side of 95. And that's why Waze, can't emphasize, maybe out there that doesn't have W-A-Z-E. It's called Waze. Um, highly recommend you get that because it's a big difference in you getting around. Sometimes it doesn't do you great favors, but most of the time it does. And it's just this constant beltway. It doesn't matter. I mean, this 695 beltway, believe it or not, I think it's really worse than the DC beltway. And the reason there's so many three-lane it's so three lanes, so many areas, instead of four lanes. They are widening it, but it's just so bad. And this was like this 20 years ago. So it isn't like this is new. But it's just like, ugh. Getting around is not easy. I'm sure people that live on the road, you know, know these stories. If you live on the road, you kind of know where the hot spots are and the really drag spots are. This truck is just rocks. I mean, this thing just rocks. I mean, I'm really falling in love with this damn truck. I mean, it's really separating me from the Ford because of how much easier it is to drive this truck. How much more confident it is. So, wow. Are the Ford days going to start to come to an end? Yikes, right? I mean, I just can't get over how this 2500 series has such a personality. You know, in some ways... Not a Raptor truck, but just the incredible, like the Ram 1500 truck. It just has more um, confidence going down the road where it's not being, uh, you're not constantly fighting the steering wheel. That's a huge problem with the Ford product. I can honestly say now, if somebody came to me and like, what do I get? I'd be like, you know, <laughs> the GM product has a much better front end suspension um, if you're just all about having a Ford, I get it. But if you're more open to um, driving a different vehicle, and I mean hell bent that your brand, you know, you're just you got to have a certain brand. I'd be saying go to the General Motors product. <laughs> you hear me? Trader. I'm sure a lot of Ford guys out there like no way. Yeah, but it's a huge difference on how you drive down the road, and I think doesn't constantly force you to be playing at the steering wheel as you go down the road. I mean, I have no hands. This thing just goes down the road like nothing. 
wow, even as much as I live on the roads, even for me, I am forgetting on how that major bridge, the Francis Scott Key Bridge, got taken out by that tanker, and how up here you would think that this area would be just in um, chaos on the roads because of that losing that part of the other side of the beltway, and it isn't. So I'm very uh, actually pretty impressed that being up here in Baltimore that this hasn't affected the uh, getting around this area because this is where you'd really start to see a heavy impact of that bridge forcing traffic to go a different way. So, but there's a lot of ways to get around this Baltimore area. I think it has a little better infrastructure on going from one side from east to west and west to east. Somebody may challenge me on that, but if you're watching me get around this 695, 95 North area, it isn't really any different than it usually is with the heavy traffic. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to get on 95 and shoot up north through the tunnel that shoots you right up to the other side of 695 on the north side. And it's much more efficient than driving around the Bellway, which that's what I usually do. But it's a long, it's a long drive, and it's usually a lot of traffic. So, uh, but for the person who's going to pay tolls, they're going to be a guy going. But I don't want to pay the the, uh, the toll to go through the uh, under under the uh, the tunnel, and I get all that. All right. Make sure I stay on course here because uh, I don't drive this all the time. But what's interesting here is. See, it's at the 95 South Washington and the Baltimore all in one. I think I'm in the right lane. It can be a little confusing on how you get around. If you don't road, drive these roads all the time, it does. It's incredible how it was Friday that we drove. You know, we came this way Friday. Here's Monday. I'm back in the same area on business. And it's just incredible how I have business in certain areas throughout my whole career and I end up buying a vehicle like over near that area that I'm usually not really in. Like I bought a really nice Viper truck back in 2004 in Waldorf, Maryland at Waldorf Dodge. And I actually had my dad drive that Ram SRT10 silver Viper truck. I was one of the first ones to get it back in 2004. You can only imagine back at that time having a YouTube channel if I could have published that how much um, publicity that would have gotten back at that time. Because those things were extremely rare. Yeah, to this day, do I kind of wish I would have kept that truck? I do. That's a truck I should have kept. I'd have a hell of a collection if I had a my Black Knight SRT10 Ram truck. Wow. I should have never let it go. This truck is just so smooth through the gears. I mean, this is like a Cadillac of trucks. And I'm not saying that the Ram and the Fords aren't similar in that aspect, but this big-ass V8 motor and uh, transmission, Allison transmission, it is such a nice uh, combination. And it's a true and tried combination of a truck for many years now. It's just, uh, wow. And we're in the reins. And that changes the dynamics of the way people drive. And is it much more dangerous? It is. Because people keep on driving like it's a dry, dry day out. And they go through the corner and then slip, slip, bye-bye. There's another of those stories. And with my glasses on, it does help the uh, spray, the water spray from our vehicles, where I can see better because of the dark glasses. Believe it or not, that does help you. When you're driving down a really rainy day and you're following other cars that are creating all that spray, I've noticed how it, you can see past the spray and you see better. So right now I can see everybody kind of stopping up here. And if through the camera, you may see things better than me because the camera. And you really can't see the beautiful inner harbor of Baltimore because of all the rain. It really is a pretty city. got my fast toll, my easy pass on my windshield, so I should be okay. I'll be getting a bill from the state of Maryland for Friday, because this didn't have an easy pass in it, but they're usually pretty cool. They just send you a bill, and you just pay the toll fee, and that's it. 
you go online and pay the toll fee. They don't really penalize you unless you don't pay it on time. Another nice thing here, and it's kind of creative, is they put this little holder up here, and you can put your sunglasses up there, because I don't see a sunglass holder, but that is kind of creative. And I can put your sunglasses right up there, that's kind of a nice area. Well, now you can kind of see the downtown. And I don't know if you'll be able to see way over toward the bridge. Got taken out. I'll check on that in a second for you. I used to come up here in the late 80s, early 90s. I used to have some customers up here in the oil industry. One of them was a company called Carl Messenger Service, which they specialized in delivering envelopes and documents, paperwork. And it's just incredible how that... that all changed when the fax came, you know, came along. And the fax machine came along. Then the email came along, and that truly changed the dynamics of that company. That was a uh, messenger company that, for many, many years, was very successful because it drove around to businesses and delivered crucial things that were needed, you know, very quickly. And yeah, so I don't know. We've kind of still got to go a little further here to see that key bridge that got taken out. This here just so brings back the memories to me of the, you know, the 30s, 40s, 50s, I guess, you know, the, the, just the really true beginnings. There's another ship that's come in. And so, yeah, if you can see over there, I'll try to zoom in. You'll be able to see maybe the bridge is missing. That big crane's in front of it. I don't know how good to be driving. And doing that's going to help you, but... So you get another shot here. So I think you can see it from there. There's, yeah, you know, there's a big amount of, there's a lot of bridge that was removed from that ship. Wow. As we now we're gonna go underwater. You ever kind of get freaked out about that? There's the terminal where they bring in cars and all types of goodies. There we are in the tunnel. This truck is just so nice. It's just soaking up these bumps. And the steering on it's very confident. You know, this is a lot of truck. I mean, this is a big ass truck. I mean, if you're not the experienced truck driver, you know, you would be intimidated by this truck. I would be. I mean, this is a lot of vehicle. But this thing just so so nice. It's It'll be interesting as I do the longest drive in this truck for today to see how my body feels, how the seat of my pants feels. And that's what it all really takes is being behind the wheel of these things for hours on end to see if it really is what it is. And so far, it just isn't jostling me around and beating the crap out of me, which tends to happen in these heavier duty trucks. You just really get bounced around. Yesterday, riding that Harley, man, this sucks. This is where I'm going. I think I'm going to get drenched today. Oh, well. Hey, I tell you what, that that Harley Davidson CBOST, that seat, I mean, it wears your ass out. I don't know what's going on. I mean, just as I guess I get older, but those seats, I mean, all my Harley CBOs throughout my years of owning them, only the Limited, only the CBO Limited has ever been the one that's been really comfortable. Usually the CBO, Shriek Glide, or the Grove Glide, non-limited, non-torpac, those usually have a more narrow seat on them, and they're very usually stiff. And I notice that usually my tailbone or my tuchus is really hurting at the end of the day. And sure enough, that's CBST. We didn't ride long yesterday. and time I got back in, that thing was hurting. So that seat sucks. But I'm really surprised that my hot at Goldwing seat which is supposed to be the luxurious touring motorcycle to go hours and hours. How I rode that one day and my freaking tuckers was killing me. It was bad. All right, side of the tunnel, heading up north. Look at all those condos, apartments. What do people pay per month for those, right? The whole infrastructure of the Baltimore, Baltimore City. Do you understand all that? Hey, with a glimmer of hope, I'll drive out of this. I can only hope. Otherwise, I'm going to be drenched. I don't want to be drenched today. But, yeah, I've been drenched before. 
you know, it's just it's like the feast or famine. We've literally have had like no rain. So now it's like downpouring rain. So some of our hope here, you know, we're going up here basically where I came to buy the trucks. The truck's home is right up here, I believe. Yeah, it sure is. White Marsh Chevrolet. So they did a heck of a job getting this deal done. You have no idea. No idea, but GM has some great incentives right now. For anybody out there interested, GM has 5.9% financing for 84 months with 90 day delayed payment. Wow, that's scary. GM's offering on these heavy duty trucks right now 5.9% financing, 84 month terms, 90 day delayed payment. I didn't get, I got the 5.9, but I didn't, I didn't get that other part of the deal because it's in my business name. But wow, any of you out there that's interested in a GM truck, that's that's quite the deal for the interest rate structure out there. Best interest rate I have gotten in quite a while. So uh, just a heads up if you want to go check a truck out. Great truck. I'm this truck is just so nice. I mean, just wow. I'd have to say this is the nicest truck, heavy duty wise, that I've bought in, in a long, long time. I'm not talking about the half ton Raptor Ram truck. I'm talking about the three quarter ton, one ton heavy duty series truck. This truck just is so nice. I just can't get over how comfortable it is. Yeah, a lot going on up here in this 95 North, north of the 695 Bellway. I mean, they're redoing this whole road to make it much wider. I'm guaranteed it's to be the fast lanes where you got to pay to be in these uh, quicker lanes that they're doing major expansion, which will be good, but it just depends how far up they go. Once you get up there to Delaware, does it continue the same? I doubt it. But it's a major infrastructure, and I haven't watched this be going on for the last two, three years at least, if not four or five. As we get up the road, and they're really cool, 2500 Chevy HD 2500 ZR2 Bison package equipped. Wow. Oh, a glimmer of hope. Do I beat the major rains? Do I beat them? I think I may. May have just a little window here. Oh. You know, I drive a lot of roads, and it's just incredible how the ways ways will kind of direct you down to a whole different area you've never even driven which I would have gone a whole different way had not I plugged in my address to get back home. It's just crazy in how this ways really does take you through areas which you may be blown away in your own backyard that you'll be driving on roads you never even drove. I mean, you know those stories? As we get up the road I wonder how the uh, fuel mileage is doing here. A lot of car dealerships. Wow, we're up to 16. I've been doing a lot of idling, too. I'm surprised. But yeah, here you go. I mean, just uh, when I travel, you know, I wonder why I'm such a car addict, being I've spent most of my career driving the roads and driving around. And what do I see but cars, cars, cars. I mean, it's a psychological thing if you really stop and think about it, because not only do you see all the cars that are around you, and you see the latest, greatest one that somebody bought, but then you're just driving around, it's like, here, this, this, I mean, you, it's beyond believable of how many car dealerships are around these towns. I mean, it's just, and they're massive. It's all about the car industry. It's just incredible. I'm sure most get all that. So now I've gotten off the main highway, and I'm going to be taking back roads to get back over to 695, which part of me is like, yeah, I don't know. That 95 through tunnel seems to be pretty efficient. So, got a good hour and a half. So, I'm going to get I'm gonna get a good 300 miles on this truck today, which ought to be good. I'm always amazed on how people are just so short-sighted because you can easily go to one of these dealerships, and I've talked about it a lot on my channel. It's so easy to go to a car dealership and say, look at all these cars, look at all these vehicles. They don't sell any vehicles, but what people understand is when you have three, four, five hundred cars in a lot, 
and you're averaging 10 of them being sold a day, honestly, could you walk this lot and tell me which 10 vehicles they sold? There's no way. So it's once again, it's the constant rhetoric on my channel that how do you sell three, four, 500 cars a month if you don't have three, four, 500 cars in your lot? And if you're the if you're a person that drives up down the street every day, how do you know which 10 cars just sold today? But you want to go on is they'll sell three, four, five middle of the week. But on the weekend, they'll sell like in one day 20. That's what goes on. So it's just, oh my gosh. It would be the only way you'd really ever figure that out is you get a drone, you go above a dealership, you take a picture every day to figure out their inventory, and then they check the inventory the next day. You'd even need probably artificial intelligence to help you figure this all out with uh, you know what's missing what's new but that's probably for me that would be probably a pretty cool idea you take and you just shut down these youtuber guys and make these claims that these car dealerships don't sell anything and it's like you go there one day and then you make these claims do you ever go back do you ever take inventory of all their cars do you actually work there yeah I know it's a waste of time conversation, but at the same time, it just shows you how people are just blind. Yeah, I made that post on Facebook yesterday with one of my other Facebook um, subscribers that kind of he and I, Sean, Sean Floyd on Facebook, he kind of interacts with me because he kind of sees the way I think and he posts a lot of stuff. And it's like people don't look with their eyes anymore, they only listen with their ears. That's where we are in today's society more than ever is people are not actually looking at what's going on. They're listening to what's going on and they just want to hear what they want to hear. And what, you, what they're hearing is the broken promises. That's the reality. All right. We're really busy. So once again, I mean, I'm up in this Bel Air north of Baltimore area. This is not the D.C. metro area government contractors. This is a, this is a long way. That's, that's probably 60 miles away from where I am. So once again, the people out there that claim because where I live, I mean, the roads are these roads. I'm on back roads, and it's busy. Just where I was, extremely busy. All the roads, shopping centers, gas stations, they're all very busy. And this is Bel Air, Maryland. This is north of Baltimore. tractor doing the trimming along the uh well this truck is just eats up the bumps so i know you're sick of it but this is just a badass truck yeah i know anybody watch me so now this is the baddest ass truck yeah i know i hear you people be like oh yeah yeah right since you just bought it it's now the baddest ass truck in your collection right yeah yeah sure we get all that conversation yeah you sure do don't you a nice day out as far as just kind of being the rain so we really do need but up here it doesn't seem like it's as dry which I'm just kind of now starting to pay attention to so up in this Bel Air Maryland area it looks like they've had a lot more rain than we have down where we are so maybe down where I am they're not even getting any rain it wouldn't surprise me I've ridden my motorcycle up here believe it or not 